This right here is an ecosystem aquarium, and I call it that because it has not had a single water change in a whole year. Now I know, I know what you're thinking, utter BSMD, but honestly, like I'm not the only one to have done this, and I'm sure if you look down in the comments, like not straight away, but if this video's been out a little while, you'll see other people as well that have done this. And this aquarium has taught me so, so much and is the catalyst to a lot of other ones that I did and the success that I'm having with them as well. So for instance, the Rainbow Fish Aquarium over here was literally based on the same sort of idea. Massive thick substrate system, it's way thicker than that further back, it comes up to about halfway. Initially, lower stocking levels, although now, especially with the addition of all the new rainbows, there's the males at the back there. It's different now than when I started, obviously I only had about six fish in to start. But the idea being, pack it all full of plants, and you know, big substrate system, low stocking levels, medium level of feeding, so I feed every other day. Medium level of light as well, although these are more medium to high, but they're still okay because I've covered up a lot of areas with floating plants and that sort of thing. Anyway, it's not about this tank, is it? So yeah, a year of something running, I think you can safely say that, oh my goodness, can you hear that? They're building downstairs in the gym. <laughs> Year only wear tank running for a year without any water changes. I think we can call that a success, can't we? So let me take you back and show you how we created this. So I think it's fair to say that a lot has changed in a year, hasn't it? <laughs> I mean, for instance, there's a lot more red going on now than when I first planted the tank. Now, believe it or not, I've not actually added any new plants to the tank. It's just that when I planted them, they were in a different setup and they were more green because the lighting wasn't so high. Now, I also added a second light to this tank. So you can see there's one, there's two. Initially, I had it hanging, didn't I, when I first did that setup. Uh, it, was, it was hung quite high actually and then quite quickly I realized you know what we can go to higher lighting but it was good to start on the lighting that we did because it meant that it didn't get tons of algae. Another interesting fact I didn't actually plant any moss in this tank on anything at all so all of the moss that you can see here has come from other tanks and was like obviously intertwined in some of the plants when I planted them which is quite funny because there is a huge ball of it right there and this stuff has just sort of spread everywhere and like I say I didn't want to do anything I didn't want to change it because it's an ecosystem let it do its thing. So yeah ecosystem tanks a big major contributing factor is the floating plants so for instance these here got a little bit of browniness to them um, Hello guys. Oh, look. Hello. They love me. Oh, I just stroked about four of them and they didn't mind. Don't stroke your fish though. You'll remove their slime coats. <laughs> so one of the things that I always seem to fall behind on is actually removing some of the floating plants because this tank is actually looking way darker than it needs to at the moment. The good thing about the salvinia that we're using here, look, is you can pick it up in clumps so easily just to remove it. I've used duckweed in the past, and I, in actual fact, I started this tank with duckweed, and very quickly I was trying to scoop it out because it was just getting entangled and everything. Oh, it can be such a pain, duckweed. I mean, it's good for like 
tanks where you've got fish that will eat it. So maybe a goldfish tank, um, other fish. I think other fish eat them as well, but I'm not entirely sure. Oh, turtles. Turtles eat duckweed as well, so it's good for a turtle tank. But yeah, salvinia was my second go-to, and nowadays I use the mini water lettuce. You can see now actually the amount of crud coming out. Let me pick you up. Yeah, you can see there, look, the amount of crud now that's floating out into the water column, all of that was caught up in the floating plants, which is not ideal because it's going to like mess with the parameters. Although well, saying that, the parameters are pretty good, obviously, because the tank's doing so well. And look how much of a difference that's made. It's so much brighter everywhere now. So I've actually taken out a whole pot's worth of that salvinia. <laughs> it's not the healthiest of stuff, to be honest, but that's probably because there's not a lot of nutrients in the water column and any that are there are producing new plants straight away. And I actually did this about a month ago, so a whole pot in a month, that's pretty good going in. It's not too much to keep on top of. But I know there's going to be some of you that are thinking, okay, how do we do this ourselves? I'm not really telling you how, am I? I showed you the build video, but let's explain a few details in case you want to be doing this. So one of the first things to note that you may have noticed on the build video, there wasn't a huge amount of nutrients in the substrate layer. So I laid just a sort of thin capping of aquasaur over one side and one over the other, and then capped the whole lot in sand. So basically when we started, there wasn't a huge amount of nutrients. There was enough to get the plants growing, but there was like no algae going on in this tank. Couple that with the fact that we only put in a few fish as well. It means that the whole sort of nutrient or waste level, because waste is nutrients, remember, stays low the whole time. Low nutrients in a tank like this is absolutely key. And just to confirm what I'm saying there, I've actually tested this out accidentally on one of my other ecosystem tanks, which I've started talking about and completely forgot to turn all the lights on. I turned off all these lights because they were reflecting in the glass on the one we were filming. So yeah, put them back on. So yeah, this is my rare fish ecosystem. And when I set this up, I pretty much did it in a similar way. Since the, uh, the main ecosystem tank, I've developed a few more skills. One of which is that I put Aquasaur now in little uh, media bags and then cap it with sand. Just means I can reuse them. Doesn't mix in with all the sand. You don't see any of it. And I think it gives a great result. Like you can clearly see the plants are growing amazing. Now in this tank, I put a lot of fish in straight away. We had about, I don't know, a couple of hundred fish straight away. I mean, there are, they are all nano fish, aren't they? Gorgeous um, koi, koi guppies there, koi endler guppies. And then we've got green rosboras as well. We've got uh, celestial pearl danios, or galaxy rosboras, they're also known. We've got a load of little nano rainbow fish. We've got chili rospora there. There's so much going on in this tank, absolutely love it. Now it's not been anywhere near as plain sailing as the other ecosystem. It's only just starting to get balanced in fact, and it's been well over a few months now. A few months or approaching a few months at least. Oh yeah, don't forget the gold laser quarries as well. We've got gold laser quarries, awesome. I also added two lights from the start. Again, not making all of this impossible, but a lot more difficult. So I had high nutrients, as in waste from the fish, I had high lighting and it's taken one and a half to two months to get balanced. Whereas the other one, it was great from the start and it didn't become unbalanced, do you know what I mean? So yeah, make sure that you start your nutrient levels low. Can't emphasize that enough in an ecosystem tank. Now we'll move on to maintenance and adding ferts and things like that as and when needed. But for, to start with, very minimal, minimal nutrients. So next up on the agenda, maintenance. How do you maintain something that you don't do water changes in? I know it can seem really confusing, right? So the two things, one that was the first key thing was the floating plants, of course. The second thing was this bad boy right here. So it's a little internal filter. Well, it's not little, it's a decent size actually. I think it's about 800 liters an hour. I'll put that up on screen what that is, gallons. Um, and it's just got a little sponge section underneath. Now, all I'm really doing with this is just blowing water around. The idea being that not too much collects on the base or the substrate layer. It just lifts up into the water column, comes back round, and eventually the sponge will collect it. Now, what this means is that once a month, probably, when it starts to make a noise, because it's so clogged, I take it out the top, take that sponge out, squeeze it into some little pots, which I then put the water into this Monstera plant here, which is going crazy. And this other one, I don't, I don't know what that plant's called, but it's also going really well. <laughs> so yeah, we're exporting uh, nutrients and waste in two ways then, by taking out the floating plants, new ones grow using all the nutrients, and by taking out that sponge and cleaning it out. And you can also trim as much as you want and not trim because even trimming plants is exporting waste, isn't it? Because new ones have to grow and they have to use new nutrients. Look at this plant. 
Look at this little flower on the end. Is it going to pick it? No, not you, Mr. Fishy. Yeah, that's growing all the way from down there with these um, quadra something. I can't even remember what this one's called. Um, but it's like a mini Amazon sword, and that makes sense that it shoots out these little things like Amazon swords as well. Anyway, about maintenance. So yeah, you have the option to trim the plants as much as you want, or you can do what I've done here, of course, and just let it do its thing. I mean, the only time I've trimmed the stems is when they've gone right to the top, and blocking loads of light, which is what I would do again soon. But for instance, on this ecosystem tank here, which is the Rainbow Fish Aquarium, I do lots of trimming all the time and keep it nice and neat and, you know, complete different look. Again, the same on that one, although that one is due, the Platy Mountain, that is due another trim up, isn't it? And the Rare Fish Aquarium, well, I've not actually had to trim it at all yet, but it won't be long, will it? Look, it's definitely getting to that point now where it needs a trim back. So yeah, I think if you want to go for that proper raw sort of look, then you just leave it. Like, that's all natural. All of that settled there of its own accord or grew there. Again, with the Trident Ferns, I mean, they're not the most healthiest of Trident Ferns, but there's only a few bad ones that I could take out. And again, over here with the moss, I just left it, let it do its thing, and it, it does have its re this really cool effect to it, doesn't it? So topping the water up about once a month, the water drops about here. I just top it up to there. I've got a lot of open top tanks, haven't I, guys? So what I make sure that I do is never fill it up. Like, you know, you might see on YouTube with some of the top, like aquascapers, the water comes right up there. I'm pretty sure they only do that for the, you know, photo or for the video they're on. So I just keep it about an inch and a half down. You'll see that on most of my tanks as well. Now, when I top the water up, it's also the cue for me to add a fertilizer. I just use API Leaf Zone. It's all I've used in both these, uh, both these studios now. And every tank you see uh, is just the API Leaf Zone. And it's just done great. I don't, don't feel like I need more than that. I mean, obviously I'm not running big high-tech tanks, so it's probably adequate with the fish waste. We're getting like everything we need. But yeah, if I noticed any yellowing on the leaves, that sort of thing, take the leaf zone. I always do in these big ones, one full capful and then a second full capful as well. And on the half size tanks, the 60 centimeters, I just do a capful. I don't know if that's the right amount, if I'm honest, but that's what I do. <laughs> but if you're in any doubt on the dose inside of things, it's all written on the bottles and that anyway. So there we have it then. I mean, all in all, that's pretty simple, right? And that was the idea when I set these up. I wanted to set up a lot of tanks that I didn't have to do a huge amount to, and that's where the idea of the ecosystem aquarium came about. So what we've we got, simple internal filter, cheap lighting, although I've doubled up there, but it's still cheaper than like your expensive high-end lights. We want low nutrients as well, which means low stocking levels. At the start, at least, you can add more as you move along. And then we want minimal fiddling around with the tank if you want to go for that proper eco look. If you want like a, I don't know, a full aquascape look, then yeah, do your trim and it's not going to hurt at all. But ultimately, I think what's been demonstrated here is that it doesn't have to cost a lot and also it doesn't have to have hundreds of hours put into it every week as well. Hopefully this is something that you will enjoy and you've enjoyed the video. Many people ask you to subscribe at the start of the video when they've not sh shown you anything at all. I'm gonna ask you to subscribe now. If you fancy doing that, it means a lot to me. And hopefully then I'll see you on the next one. See you later, bye.